Hello and welcome. This is Katie. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am back with another project for Maker Forte and today we're going to do a resist technique using gel medium and our stencils. Pretty cool. Gives us a different way to stretch our supplies and make fun backgrounds, right? So we're going to use the Ginkgo stencil from Maker Forte. And here I'm just showing you that it's imprinted on there. You need some blending brushes. You need one blending brush at least. And I definitely recommend foam tools for the resist portion of the technique because we need to apply a lot of ink. And then I do recommend small detailing brushes. Could be an eyeshadow brush is fine. I'm using gloss heavy gel from Liquitex and you want to make sure that whatever you're using for the gel medium, it just says that it's transparent or it's translucent when it dries. So uh, the resist portion, you want to make sure you use a dye based ink, a pigment ink is a no, no, it's going to sit on top of the surface and it's not going to work. So dye based ink is what you want to use when we get to the resist portion. Now for the blending portion, I'm going to use a couple color hive inks, Yellowstone and English mustard. So we're going to start with Yellowstone and just tapping off some of that ink right there on the stencil. And I'll use that and, you know, to pick up and get more color as I need it and then go back to my ink pad to get more as well. Being careful with this particular stencil because it's got some fine um, tines for the details and uh, some of them I already bent. So um, do be mindful of that when you're if you're using the stencil or any delicate stencil in the direction that you go. Now, I could have gone and just did straight um English mustard, but I wanted to have kind of a, a blend two tone look to the golden ginkgos. And so that's why I'm opting for both of these colors. Now, once I get all of the ginkgo leaves filled in with the Yellowstone, I'm going to come in with the English mustard and do the same thing. Being more mindful to keep the darker color at the base of the petal and on the stems. And then as I get to where I want to deepen that color, that's where your fine blending brushes, your detail blending brushes are going to come into play. Now, uh, I will go back to the gel medium. Any gel medium is going to work for this. You just want to make sure that it dries transparent or translucent. That way your color is going to shine through. And this technique, you know, I'm just doing this here with this one. I'm sure I'll do more of these uh, in different colors, different stencils and things like that, because it's a really fun way to stretch your supplies and get more f uh, from your product that you already have without, you know, embossing and you know it's it's nice to change up the technique every once in a while and get the same effect um, as if you were to use embossing powder so here i am coming in with the english mustard and again being mindful i do still want to have some of that english mustard come from the top um, and to give some definition to those fine cuts that are in that stencil and now I'm going to come in with the de detail blending brush and that way I can really fade up the blend from the base of the uh, stem there up into the petal and it just makes for a really fun look. Now the one thing about this is you see that I lift up the stencil and show you each of the colors as we apply them. You don't have to do the resist technique if you don't want to. Um, it's just something different you know, to play around with. Uh, but this is a really pretty background, even with just a white backdrop. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I keep everything together. I'm going to lift up and show you once I get done with this little bit of extra inking. And then I'll take a dry cloth, paper towel, actually paper towel, I think is a little rough for this stencil because it really picks up on the little fine tines but using like a microfiber cloth or you know a very soft towel uh, will work to wipe the ink away now you want to get as much ink off as you can and before you come in with your liquitex gel or your gel medium whatever you're using um, and also be mindful that you're, you've used a dye based ink at least in my case and there is going to be bleed from your water-based medium, gel mediums are water-based. So 
there's no problem with that here because you're going to blend all those colors together anyway. It's just when you dip back in your pot to get more gel medium, you just want to be careful that you don't contaminate that. So when I'm applying this, you can kind of see some of the ridges in my knife, you know, my palette. So there's going to be a little bit of texture to the ginkgo leaves once the, once the gel dries. I'm okay with that. I don't need that to be perfect. Really, I'm just trying to lock that color in. But if, you know, you need it to be smooth, just, you know, you can make it a little bit thicker so that, um, you know, you just have a little bit more product. It's a little bit more raised um, to keep it nice and smooth. And now we're done. We're going to set it off to dry. I think I said let this dry a couple of hours. Maybe only needed an hour, but I wanted to make sure that that was nice and dry. And here you can see I'm using gloss. Okay, so it's a heavy gloss. If you don't want it shiny, just use the matte. Again, just make sure that it's transparent or translucent when it dries. So this is why I mentioned the foam tool. Blending brushes are great. They give a nice soft color payoff. I talk about this in most of my blending videos. But when you want a nice dark color saturation, you definitely want to use a foam tool. It doesn't matter if you use the domed or the flat like I'm using here, but the foam just picks up a ton more color and releases it nicely and deeply onto your cardstock. Now, out of habit, out of all, like all resist techniques, I'm just buffing off the uh, surface there of the ginkgo leaves just to keep everything clean. But there really wasn't that much ink on there, uh, which is nice. And so I'm just going to finish up the rest of this panel. And I was inspired. Uh, I would, was doing a search on ginkgo leaves and came across a painting that had these two crossed, like here in the center, leaves, golden ginkgo leaves, and like a bronzy, dark brown background. And I thought, you know, hmm, I wonder if we could make something like that into a card. And sure enough, we can. So now you could do this with embossing powder too. If you don't have the gel mediums, um, you're just going to put your embossing ink on the stencil and then use clear embossing powder over the top of that. So you have some options if you don't have gel medium uh, to be able to get the same effect. Now I buffed everything off and now I'm coming in with Delicata Ink Celestial Copper. Now I'm a big fan of shimmery stuff and I love the Delicata inks. And so this allowed me to put that bronze touch and copper touch onto the background. So, um, I'm being quick about it because it is a pigment ink and the because my uh, application of the gel was not smooth there is some ridges obviously in the ginkgo leaves so you know the ink is going to pick up in there so I'm being was being quick about adding that so I can make sure to get that additional ink off and now we're going to do a thank you sentiment I'm using a one inch wide by five and a quarter inch uh, piece of vellum. This is 48 pound vellum that I'm using. I've got my kaolin clay powder in this uh, powder brush. Versamark ink. Going to ink that up a couple of times and then just use some gold embossing powder over the top of that. And we'll heat set that until it's smooth and melted. And one of the things I did uh, here, I'm showing you that the kaolin clay powder comes right off. You just got to buff it off with a soft cloth. And once I get that heat set, I actually decided to double up the vellum so that the sentiment would stand out a little bit more on that background. So here you can see, and then I back it up with another piece of vellum. So just some double-sided adhesive. Now, a tip here, use a, a strip of double-sided adhesive that's as wide as your piece of vellum, whatever that is. That's going to keep the the adhesive from shining through. Sorry, I was trying to find the words. Here you can see the lines of the adhesive. I don't mind that, but if you don't like it, just a solid piece of adhesive will prevent that from happening. But that is going to finish up the card, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Be sure and check the description box below and check out the Crafter Party Maker Forte's Facebook group and follow along and share your creations. We'd love to see what you guys are making. Here's a couple of videos up next for you to check out. And I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next video.